All right, welcome back to the channel. Today for this video, we are going to be discussing the issues that have cropped up with the new 1801 and 2001N flybacks from Peter at Arcade Parts and Repair. But before we do, let's talk about a little bit of background here about these replacement flybacks. So Peter goes through an exorbitant amount of effort and money to try and get these things replaced for all of us hobbyists because once these are gone, that's it. The The manufacturers of these are stopping production because the demand is pretty much just zero, has gone to zero. Everybody is LCDing this and LCDing that. And, and manufacturing flybacks for old antiquated CRT technology is not profitable for these companies anymore. So Peter is really just providing such an amazing job of all of his time and effort to try and get these still to be made for us. It's just fantastic and it's much appreciated for him and all of his family at Arcade Parts and Repair. Just, uh, I want to put that out there that, that he is a lifesaver for me and all of the rest of us hobbyists out there and even arcade operators to keep these things going because it's uh, it's pretty much dire straits out there at the moment. So uh, a lot of the a lot of the effort to provide good quality materials is coming from him and his efforts. So it's much appreciated for him and his family and everything and everyone that's involved with that. So thanks Peter and all you guys. It's much appreciated. So that being said, what he has done is he has sent me a box and surplus of these replacement flybacks. And I am going through the testing on the Sharp XM 1801 and 2001s to try and see if these are good good quality and uh, are good to be put out there to the masses. And the issue is that these things, when they're made, depending on what part uh, or what time of the year they're made, I should say, the quality is not so good. There's a potting compound here and here. Inside this transformer, it's literally a transformer. There's a bunch of windings in there, various sections of windings to provide different voltage outputs for various things. And they separate those windings and those voltage outputs with potting compound. They just pour liquid potting compound in there and it sets up. And once it's hardened, it's uh, theoretically done. But the problem is, depending on what time of the year they produce these, the potting material doesn't set up properly. And what will happen is the potting has air holes in it or air pockets, and those individual windings in there will short, uh, short to each other. When they short to each other, it pretty much causes the flyback to crap out or shoot a giant bubble out the side or, or just fail internally or get really hot, overheat, all kinds of problems. So depending on when these are manufactured, uh, what time of the year that potting compound cannot set up properly and they're just the whole batch is ruined and peters out hundreds of thousands of dollars so yeah um that's the purpose and the importance of testing these properly because he can buy them from the manufacturer and just spit them out to the public and if they fail oh well you know you take you take you you well, how does that phrase go yeah you pays your money it takes your chances but obviously no reputable business would do that so Peter gets these these made and sends them out to people like me and other people to do some testing on, and we either say yay or nay. So it's come down to the point now to where I'm testing these for the 2001 and 1801s for the uh, Nintendo Red 10s and the Nintendo Play Choice 10s. So the 2001 here is almost exclusively used in the Play Choice 10s and the Midway Nintendo conversion kits, and the 1801s are used exclusively in the Nintendo Red 10s. And it's people have been clamoring and chomping at the bit to try and get a reputable flyback replacement for these made because the ones that are on the market now have a black bar on the screen. And they work and function with no issue except for that black bar here. And if you can live with that black bar, then okay, but that's not supposed to be there. And it was directly caused by the flyback replacement flybacks were not the correct uh, what might have had a bad winding or one less winding than it needed or something for the horizontal, but it had the black bar there. So Peter has got these new flybacks in, and I'm doing testing on them. And they work, but they cause an oscillation problem when you don't have the brightness set properly. So let me show you exactly what's... Uh, with all that preamble out of the way there, sorry. Uh, let me show you what this is actually doing now that we're getting to the meat of this video. Uh, it does operate and work, but there, when you turn the screen down a little bit, it has some bad oscillation problems. And then when you have it set properly and the, the image goes to black, when the image comes back from being black, it has oscillation problems for a split second and then goes back to normal. So that shouldn't be like that. So these have to run on 100 volts. These are designed to run in Nintendo cabinets that have the 100 volt output. Uh, like in a Red Tent or a Play Choice 10, you have the 100 VAC output. 
Uh, if you're trying to run this off a 110 output from like your standard arcade machine, uh, isolation transformer, uh, you'll have even more oscillation issues. So these are designed to run on 100 volts. So if you're running one of these, make sure you run this on the 100 volt supply or get yourself an isolation transformer that outputs 100 volts, not 110. That being said, okay, so let's turn this on. One, two, three. Okay, comes on. And you'll see that it appears to work and function properly. Uh, well, I say that, but we did have a little bit of the oscillation there at the top. Uh, let's make sure that we are set here to about where it needs to be. Right about um, there's good. All right. So it appears to operate and work. Uh, let me skip past this, but watch what happens here. Oh, I'm in the menu. Uh, I skipped past it too early. Okay, anyway, we're in the menu from earlier testing. Sorry. But anyway, you look, you look and see that it seems to be okay. However, if I turn this screen pot down, you can hear a high frequency noise and look at what's happening here. It gets all scrambled. Now, if I turn the screen voltage back up, as I bring it up, it will fix itself. So you get to the point to where it needs to be, roughly about there, and it seems to be okay. Now, if I was to go out of the menu here, watch where it says revision 4.0 at the top here. See how it was all messed up? Now, watch what happens when the screen goes dark, and then when it comes back, watch this. Oh, see? See how it was wigged out there. So right now the brightness is set exactly where it needs to be. Uh, light balance and fading and everything is fine. Um, and when the screen goes dark, it wigs out. And when it comes back in, doop, see you saw there how it was kind of scrambled and then once the image came back fully, uh, the scramble went away. So there's, it's not quite perfect. Now with the factory flyback, it does not do that at all. This is absolutely perfect in all aspects. This thing appears to work fine, except when the screen goes black and comes back to brightness, uh, it, it wigs out there slightly. And I can produce the effect by turning it down. See, if I turn the screen down, it wigs out again. So there's a solution that we have found, going back and forth with Peter trying various different things. Um, I have, we have found a solution to this, and I'm just making this video for him and for everybody else, again, this needs to go roughly right there. For him and everybody else, uh, we have come up with a solution to fix this problem. And it involves putting a capacitor across a specific point on the chassis. So now let me get this to sit upright and I'll get the camera on the overhead and go through some stuff and we'll show you what to do and where to put that capacitor. There, see that? That Goro Lives text was the only thing on the screen and it was all gibberished out and if you look here see that so that's with the the screen pot set right where it needs to be it's still not perfect it's still a bit wavy and gnarly yeah see right there if you look there and pause the video maybe i can try and slow it down but you can see how when the screen came up uh it was all wigged out there so all right let me get this turned upside down i'll trace the pathway out and show you where to put the cap uh, the solution i should say the solution is to put a capacitor across a couple of pins uh, to um, kind of fix that oscillation problem. Uh, that was fine there. But uh, yeah, I'll get this upside down here and I'll point the camera down and you can see, there it did it again, what the solution is going to be. Okay, so here we are on the bottom side of the chassis and you'll have to excuse the all the flux residue and gnarly uh, s pads and connections because I've had this flyback out of this thing in and out about a dozen times now trying various solutions to this. So that some of the pads are a little damaged and a little overdone on the solder. So disregard all this. This is I'll have to go through here and re repair some pads and fix this up, make it look more professional once you know all this testing is done. But basically, pin three and six are the screen voltage outputs on this thing. So if you follow pin three, it comes out around over and ends up going right to this pad right there. It follows around here and goes up to three. Now pin six here. If you follow pin six, it comes down and goes to this pin of R602, comes across here and meets up with the anode of D601. And the solution to this is to put this 
154, 0.154 microfarad or 154J uh, 400 volt. It really should be about 650 volts, but I ran this for 24 hours straight with this brand new flyback and this cap across these two points. This thing worked perfectly for 24 hours without a single issue and this has resolved the problem. So by putting this capacitor across the uh, screen voltage output of pins three and six, it solves the issue. Now you cannot, we tried to put this capacitor directly on across three and six and it was changing the inductance of the flyback and it was causing the chassis to go into shutdown. So we had to come up with a solution to not have it affect the inductance of the flyback. So putting it across, uh, our, basically you're putting it across R602. R602 is in, in circuit through the capacitor versus being directly across pins three and six. So we're connected to one side of the capacitor is connected directly to pin three by going right here to this pad. It follows around and goes right to pin three. But uh, going here across R602 to the anode, D, D601 really isn't even in the equation. It is an, it, a little bit, but the fact that we're just pretty much putting the cap across R602 to pin six and directly to pin three has solved the inductance issue. Uh, it's With this in here, it's slightly darker, about maybe like 10% darker, so you have to turn the flyback up a little bit more to compensate. But I ran it for 24 hours without any problems. So this appears to be a viable solution. I need to wait to see if Peter is going to say yes or give the blessing to put this out there as a out there for sale on the site with the uh, condition that you install this cap across these points, or he may come up with a different place. But I'm putting this out there really for his edification and for your edification that this is in the works and it is available, available, um, viable solution to the problem that will uh, solve the issue. So now that you know what the issue is, what the solution is, well, I'll leave this in the circuit. I went ahead and soldered it in just so you could see. I'll leave it in the circuit, put the, the uh, monitor back down, and we'll turn it back on and you can see in action that this has solved the problem. Okay, so the monitor is reoriented back down the way it needs to be. I have the capacitor installed here across three and six. Actually, well, three and then the R602 side of six. And yeah, let's see if the problem has now resolved itself. One, two, three. Okay, it comes right on. And it's usually a bit darker with that cap installed. Yeah, slightly. If we turn this up a little bit, right there and right there is where it needs to be. And it functions and looks great. So now the test is to turn the screen pot back down and we shouldn't get any oscillation. Nope. Perfect. Uh, well, so maybe a little bit, but no one's going to run their monitor that dark. I'd say, yeah, it's still a solution compared to what it was. And if we put it back where it needs to be, we can put it right there. So once this is done, we shouldn't have any oscillation at all here, right? Where it needs to be. Perfect. No more oscillation. If we skip past this, no oscillation. And then when this goes dark and then comes back, with the high score table. We shouldn't get any oscillation initially. Nope. Perfect. So there you go. Uh, that capacitor appears to have solved the issue. I would say, uh, yep. I mean, I, like I say, I tested this. I don't, I don't say appears to solve the issue. It does. I, like I say, I ran this for 24 hours straight, actually 27 and a half. I had some errands to run and uh, this uh, was barely warm. Barely warm. Um, the Cap wasn't hot, the flyback was, was fairly warm, wasn't, wasn't overheating, everything was fine, and uh, it appeared to run great without any issues. So I don't know if Peter's actually going to send the information to the manufacturer and try and get a new batch made that doesn't require the cap, or if he's gonna send these out to the public with the note that the cap needs to be installed. I don't know what he's gonna do, but this does appear to be a valid solution to fix the oscillation problems at darker levels. Uh, so, and there's no black bars, there's no black bar over here, there's no jail bars, everything is great. The only real thing that I did notice is that with the original factory flyback installed, I have a full wide image. This black, this black area is not there, this black area is not there. I have a, a full width image. With this flyback in there, I have a slightly narrower image and I've got the width coil maxed out. So uh, this flyback may require some width modifications to get a full screen on some games, but I don't know, I have a full screen with this flyback, but not with this one. So 
anyway, um, that's kind of beside the point. That can be solved later. That's not a that's not a compatibility problem. That's just change a cap out or something for a different width. But anyway, yeah, just a quick video to show that these flybacks are uh, being worked. And if you have an 1801 or a 2001 that's needing a flyback, uh, the, there is a an end in sight. There is an end in sight, a positive end. So. Again, I don't know if he's going to have another batch made that won't require this. That, that might take another year or so that is the problem with that. It might take a year or two to get another batch made that doesn't have the cap needed. So, I don't know. I think he's probably just going to release it with this one and with the note that the cap is needed. Anyway, just a quick video, somewhat quick, to show you what's going on with these. There is an end in sight, so if you need one, uh, not all hope is lost. So, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more, and we'll see you next time.